Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you this unique lens that I've got from Siri. It's a 50mm anamorphic lens and I've got both the Micro Four Thirds version here on the ZKM E2 and an E-mount version here on the Sony A6600. Plus I'll show you examples from the Blackmagic Packet 4K camera. So let me kind of quickly introduce this lens to you, which I did already show some brief tests from this in one of my previous videos. Um, what makes this lens unique is that it's an anamorphic lens that's actually affordable. Uh, by the way, this whole video right now that you're seeing you know, of me is also shot on the Micro Four Thirds version uh, of this lens, and it's shot on the Packet 4K camera. Uh, like I said, here I have the, the, the two versions of it and basically the, the company sells multiple mounts of this lens. The lens is designed to cover an APS-C size image sensor, so anything APS-C size or smaller is going to work with this. Or if you're shooting, for example, on the Sony a7 III or any other full-frame camera, uh, you can just crop into APS-C size mode. Uh, with these two cameras, this lens works perfectly. Uh, you don't have to change any of the ready settings. And you can shoot on the full 16 by 9 image sensor, which effectively is going to give you sort of a typical uh, cinema scope, you could say, uh, wide aspect ratio. And for those of you who are not familiar with anamorphic at all, I actually did an in-depth video about that, which I'll provide the link to that in the description of this video. But uh, just sort of a quick recap of anamorphic. Basically, shooting anamorphic allows you to capture a wider uh, field of view and it also produces uh, the sort of a, that widescreen aspect ratio now of course if you want to get that wider aspect ratio without losing the resolution or the pixels on the top and bottom of, of your image sensor uh, of your camera then best way to do it is to use uh, anamorphic lenses such as this one because what this effectively does is it captures a wider field of view and then it squeezes it uh, so that it can actually fit on a more sort of a square aspect ratio and now the lens when you just look at it uh, if you know anything about anamorphic lenses you'll note that this is surprisingly small and actually very light now another really unique thing about this lens is the price which right now it's around uh, five six hundred dollar per price range you guys can check the link in the description of this video uh, to, to see for the different options that you can get and the prices uh, and and if you just think about that price I mean that price for a lens that's uh, this small, it's a nice 50 millimeter cinema style kind of a built lens, meaning it's all fully manual and it's uh, suited perfectly for shooting video. Uh, and also a lens that's fairly fast. This is an f1.8. In video, it's especially helpful to have a fully manual and smooth uh, turning uh, aperture ring here that allows you to change smoothly the aperture on the go. And then the same thing with uh, the focusing. It's fully manual and you have a nice ring that uh, allows you to really kind of dial in the focus that you want. Uh, so even if you're manually focusing this lens, it's easy to kind of hit the marks. So all those things combined just make it a really great deal of a lens. And it's a lens that's nice and sharp. But then when you add to the fact that it's also anamorphic and it brings with it some of those anamorphic characteristics, uh, that really kind of takes it over the top because if you know anything about anamorphic lenses is that they're not cheap. So now it's actually really cool to see companies like Siri uh, kind of make an effort to create these affordable lenses with these unique characteristics. So some of the characteristics, uh, like I mentioned, obviously it allows you to shoot a wider field of view and that wider aspect ratio. But uh, like I said, there's many other ways you could fake that, right? Just by putting the black bars and things like that. Uh, one of the other really kind of unique characteristics about anamorphic lenses is the bokeh that it creates. Uh, because of the oval optics in the lens that kind of squeeze the image, uh, you're going to see kind of those stretched and egg-shaped like highlights. And when you look at this lens, it produces really nice uh, kind of a even looking but also stretched anamorphic bokeh. Uh, and then another cool characteristic is uh, the horizontal lens flares, which again, you probably know from a lot of the J.J. Abrams or uh, Michael Bay or some of those other like kind of big blackbuster films that use anamorphic glass. Uh, you'll notice those horizontal uh, lens flares. Some people like them, some people don't. This 
uh, lens produces those flares. Now, when actually talking about the flares that this uh, lens produces, because when I did show my first test that I shot with the Micro Four Third version of this lens, uh, a lot of people complained that the flares were, first that they were too strong and also that they were crooked. And that's because this version of this lens that I got was like the early, early pre-production model and it just wasn't finalized and didn't have all its little quirks yet adjusted. Uh, since then, as you guys can see by my example shots, that has been taken care of. So the, the current version of the Siriu anamorphic 50mm lens produces nice, uh, noticeable, but not overly noticeable, uh, horizontal flares and also they're perfectly horizontal meaning there's no slant to them uh, the lens is sharp some people have said maybe even overly too sharp i personally also maybe think sometimes i don't know if i need all that sharpness but it's it's always good to have it if you want to you can always throw in a softening filter uh, in front of your, your lens so you, you can soften your image or adjust the settings in your camera or things like that but it's always good to have a nice sharp lens because you can always make a sharper lens less sharp, you can already go the other way around. If there's maybe one thing that I would ask Sirio to maybe kind of uh, do an update to is to maybe create a Canon EF mount version, because personally that's the mount that I like them the most. Uh, but like I said, they offer this in various other mounts already, so chances are there's already a version of this lens for your camera. It's a lens that's just small, affordable, easy to use, and yet it produces a really cool cinematic image. Uh, I think an image that not too long ago would have cost you a lot more money. So overall, I think it's amazing that Sirui has released this lens and has released it in all these different mounts. Because of that, I think it's, it's gonna be a lens that's gonna be used by a lot of up and coming filmmakers or you know video enthusiasts, people who wanna experiment with anamorphic and couldn't necessarily before afford to get into anamorphic can now get this and they can pretty much use it on, on most of the cameras out there because of all the different mount versions of this lens. Uh, also, in case you were wondering, the different mount versions of this lens really are identical optically. So they will all operate the same. The only difference, again, is the mount uh, on the back of those lenses. But otherwise, the, they produce the same kind of images and have the same kind of characteristics and all that stuff. So I think it's a great lens. It's beautiful. It's sharp, even when it's all the way open. Uh, and it also produces those really cool anamorphic uh, kind of characteristics like that oval bokeh, the nice horizontal lens flares, and of course the wider aspect ratio. And because it is a 1.33 squeeze aspect ratio, it means that, again, it's gonna work with all the cameras out there that are right now shooting, usually 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio. Because, you know, with some of the other anamorphic lenses that are, for example, two times or 1.8x, uh, means that you really do need a camera that has a dedicated anamorphic mode and usually in those modes there's some restrictions in some cameras like you can't get higher frame rates and things like that well with this lens you can shoot like i said on pretty much any camera out there and you can shoot it in the standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio and still produce that beautiful wide aspect anamorphic look so if you guys want to get into anamorphic this is this is your chance so check out the links in the description of this video for the latest deals for more information as always head to my website at tomantosfilms.com and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to my newsletter my name is tom antos and i'll see you guys in the next video bye